Hey everybody, this is Tim. Welcome to Crazy for Beer. This is where we talk about making beer at home. So I'm going to go through tips, tricks, different things on how to make beer at home. It's easy to go to a store and buy beer, but if you can brew it yourself at home, there's so many different recipes, so many different styles and different techniques, and we're going to talk about that on this channel here. So put together a presentation here. I'm going to go through it um, line by line and read everything out to you on um, how to make beer at home. So let's get into it. So making beer at home, let's uh, jump over to... And this is a PDF too that we'll uh, put in the comments below where you'll be able to download that if you'd like. That's got tons of tips. So, so the history of home brewing, the process of brewing beer has been around as an art for millennium, you know, forever. It's it's only been recently, however, that practitioners have turned to it as an applied science. The oldest American brewing is D.C. Yingling and Sons in Pottsville, Pennsylvania. And I'm a huge fan of the Ling Ying, different brews and different types that they have, which has been brewing beer since 19, I'm sorry, 1829. So although we think of home brewing and brewing beer in general as a start in the 1800s, beer has actually been around for much longer than that. Home brewing and beer have always played a large and important part in our lives. In fact, it's believed that Noah provided beer to be a part of provisions on the on the ark. So Noah's ark, he provided beer. It's great. So ale. What we know today as beer was originally known as ale. Ale was made by the ferment and exact extractions from gains and cereals and certain herbs such as ground ivy and sting stinging net net bleh, nettle were used flavoring and bittering and in the 1500th century people began to notice the difference between beer and ale as beer was hopped bever was a hopped beverage that was made in Belgium beer and ale were drank in the common common people throughout the country before coffee tea cocoa were introduced. Many families, specifically farmers, brewed their own ale or beer, although these were professional brewers and town made as well. Home brewing was a household industry in those days. Most of the professional brewers consisted of widows because this was one of the few careers choices of two widows. Workers at establishments often received ale as wages so when taverns came into existence they would brew each of their own ale they would put a fresh brush outside in place for those passing and went through and was known as fresh brew so in the 1600s let's talk about that so in 196 i'm sorry i keep saying 1900 it's in 1683, William Penn started a business of brewing beer in Pen Pittsburgh, Pennsburg, to earn money as well as encourage people to drink beer instead of hard liquor, which seemed to cause bad tempers for many. In the early methods of brewing beer, it had consisted of heating and soaking barley to encourage germination, and the result was a mixture called malt when mixed water and is brought into a boil until it formed a wart which meant in it was fermented so hops then were added to the boiling substance to give it a distinctive aroma and a pleasant yet bitter taste hops used as a stability agent for flavoring beer the liquid was then strained at which time yeast was added it was then also it was then allowed to ferment and for a couple it was allowed to ferment for a couple days english versus other beers one of the major differences between brewing methods then and today is that timing was a process prior to the 20th, 20th century the rule of thumb was old time recipe determined timing 
opposed to the modern equipment and technology of used today's and, and in today's beers. There's a difference between English beer and early American beer. When English beer was made, they fermented it with yeast and flavored, and it floated to the top. Whereas Germans used yeast that would stay at the bottom of, to those to the beer. Where and then they removed the yeast afterwards. They allowed the beer to age at low temperatures for weeks. This resulted in milder beer with a bitter aroma taking on more popular style of beer. The beer took over the industry and so floating yeast style of making beer was left for making ale only. This was then a real distinction between beer and ale and how it was made. In the 1800s, the late 1800s brought about many changes in home brewing beer. It had became more difficult for the small business person or individual to complete to compete with the large breweries using up-to-date equipment. The addition of railroad helped breweries distribute beer around the nation. However, this made it a requirement that beer be able to withstand sitting for days, changes to temperature, and getting shook up a lot in transit. Chemical, chemical additives added to be removed and additives to edit had to be removed and pasturated was necessary to prevent bacteria growth. The 1900s and prohibition laws came into effect that made sure that these requirements were followed. The early 1900s brought to the great prohibition a time when it was forbidden to sell any alcohol beverages. This hurts the beer and liquor industry drastically, but it did survive. After prohibition was done, it took many years to get people back in the habit of drinking beer rather than hard liquor. However, home brewing was made legal in 1976, and many small craft brewers began making and marketing their own brands of beer for sale to other businesses in the area. And the, cra the sales of craft beer grew so highly that they became competitive to a sort of to some of the large brewers who began developing and marketing their own brands of beer. Homebrew is not near as popular as it once was, with many different, lo different laws that have enacted through the years. Many have switched from homebrewing beer to try their hands at wine and liquors. The interesting thing is about homebrewing, however, is that each beverage you can make, you still want to make more or of some of the variety just to experiment. All right, so reasons for home brewing. So people choose to home brew for different reasons. Some enjoy the art of making their own beer or the personal consump for the you know for the personal consumption and make their own and they consume it. While others home brew for the competitive spirit, the amateur or the beering contests. So you can create your own beer and you know enter it into a contest. While others brew, while others home brew for the, com oh sorry, while others home brew to distribute at social gatherings at their home, some just do it for the hobby, regardless of the reason. Home brewing is still very popular and a lot of fun once you learn the art. While the term home brewing may refer to home brewing of beer, alcoholic beverages, and some soft drinks. It's most often when discussed making beer. Beer and money. In the time of the Babylonians, beer was valued so highly that it was used as wages to be given to workers in lieu of money. Beer also played an important part to the Egyptians as it was brewed for royalty, medical purposes, and to be used in burials as a provision for the trip to the hereafter. In the, in the, I want to keep saying the 1900s. In the 1600s, when Egypt, when it, when an Egyptian, uh, when an Egyptian gentleman gave a lady a sip of beer, it meant that they were betrothed. Beer was also used for payment. Tra tragedy. Beer was also used as payment for trading, tithing, and taxing medieval times. So you can see, whereas it's a form of refreshment today, 
beer was of much importance in the past as far back as 4000 BC there were reasons for home brewing beer connoisseur if you've ever gone into a bar and you've observed beer drinkers you'll see that some will order the cheapest beer in the bar and drink whatever brand the bar happens to serve these are not true connoisseurs of beer a true and serious beer drinker has specific ideas of what they want in their beer this is another reason why many choose home brewing they like specifics they like a specific style of beer and they thrive on getting the right taste often there is a certain taste and style of beer that is not available and you go to commercial beer you know bars and that kind of thing so they home brew to access and give their taste buds a tingle home brewing for many not only is not only convenient but it's also a way to live the beer live beer taste almost all beer that is made is pasteurized so you're not getting the natural taste when beer is pasteurized it has to be cooked which takes out the carboniza carbonization commercial bre brewers are forced to carbonate by taking the boiling boiled off alcohol and mixing it with pasteurized beer which kills the yeast without live yeast the beer will not age properly which affects the taste of the beer yeast not only improves the taste of beer but the color the texture as well so the more beer it, the, the more the beer ages the better it tastes which is in large a reason why so many choose to home brew their beer beer as a fuel another another unique use for homebrew is a type of fuel many farmers that have a surplus of biomaterials such as rice grains potatoes beets etc will use these materials to make their own alcohol to provide to power their farm equipment this is not only to create not not only creative innovative and energy efficient but it's also economical cars trucks cars and trucks can also use cost of saving fuels as an alternative to paying high prices at the pump saving money so home brewing beer can be much cheaper than purchasing the equivalent amount of beers in commercial brewers taverns and stores some home brewers choose to choose to customize the recipes to their taste buds which can cost far more but these still are usually economical to the home brewer for their own beer everyone enjoys a different taste to his or her home beer not to mention the great taste of freshly home brewed beer and the satisfaction of bragging to your friends that it's your beer hop is a substance that gives beer and the majority of its flavor home brewing allows making adjustments in the amount of hop flavor that you can put into your beer some devoted beer drinkers will adjust the amount of hop flavoring to much higher what they'd like to taste in cost commercial beer home brewing also gives you the per gives a person the opportunity to adjust the amount of alcohol goes into the beer since some like high alcohol content whereas others like a mild beer flavor home brewers often like to experiment with darker light darker or even lighter beers and create some specialty beers that are unavailable on the open market or very rare to find besides all the obvious reasons mentioned here in home this home brewing um, tutorial that we're giving it's plain and simple it's a lot of fun to brew your own home beer once you get started you won't want to quit the anticipation of tasting your own beer your home brew is something that you will keep looking at the calendar and waiting for it to process and get ready and then you'll deliver it to your friends put it on their doorsteps and simply say hey I brewed this Alrighty, so legal the legal legality of home brewing. Many people that are considered considering home brewing are concerned about the legal process. When you think about home brewing, probation comes into mind. This was a dismissal period in the hearts of many beer drinkers. It lasted far too long for those liking, liking, and took too many years to get beer back on the market as strong as it was prior to prohibition the laws have changed a lot throughout the years 
differently in many states and countries. Although home brewing is legal in most states, you should check, you know, make sure that it's legal in your state or con con country uh, before you begin this process. For many years prohibition, home brewing was still still illegal in certain areas of the United States, but in spite of the fact that prohibition was repealed in 1933. In 1978, the U.S. an act or bill was passed in Congress regarding home brewing during President Jimmy Carter's tenure in office. So many people mistakenly believe this bill allowed the home brewing and beer had the home brewing of beer and wine, which was at the time still illegal. The bill was actually passed and made certain amounts of home brewing beer for personal use exempt from taxation. To further understand this bill and other bills regarding home brewing, you can check your local statutes. Time period from 1920 to 1933 when the 18th Amendment restricted any alcohol beverages to be manufactured, transported, or sold anywhere in the United States. State Law The U.S. Constitutions have given each individual state the right to dictate the laws that were affected regarding the manufacture of home-brewed beer or other alcohol substances. Do not assume that what was legal in one state will be legal in the next state. You don't want to see a new hobby of yours turn into a nightmare of legal issues. Alabama, for one, clearly states that it is illegal for any counties to have any equipment or apparatus used to manufacture any kind of alcoholic beverages. It's also illegal there to have any illegally manufactured beverages brought into the state or transported inside the state. Many states in the United States, however, do permit home brewing. There are some restrictions to the amounts of beer and the ages that a person, the age of the person brewing. Most of these laws allow no more than 100 gallons of home brew per person per household, and the person must be over 21. The maximum they can brew per year is 200 gallons. People that brew their own beers are restricted from selling it because of the federal government taxes alcohol through has ex, 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 accessorized through taxes. Most Western con countries have the same home brewing laws. In Michigan, for instance, it's perfectly legal to brew your beer if you are over the age of 21, but only up to 100 gallons. You can give your home brew to other people, but you cannot sell it. The 100 gallons initially can be broken down into 25 gallon batches of brew. Many homeowners like making smaller amounts and at one time and at one time so they can experiment with different flavors, colors and varieties. Kentucky on the under, other hand prohibits anyone from having their own proce procession of apparently use of manufactured of any kind of alcoholic beverages including home brew. While they are more concerned with illegal distilling, their laws can also extend into the home brewing beer. Brewing and distilling. Make sure that you don't confuse home brewing with distilling, which is very illegal in most states, without certain permits and requirements. Again, it's very important for your peace of mind to check specific laws in your state or your local counties that won't be jeopardizing an illegal uh, behavior for a hobby. Laws usually vary from county to county, county, country to country, state to state. Sweden, for instance, allows you to homebrew beer as long as you don't try to sell it and as long as you don't use it for personal use. As long as you, own, bleh, as long as you only use it for personal use. The United Kingdom does not allow individuals to distill or sell their homebrew products. It is illegal for homebrew beer or other fermented beverages. Homebrewers do not have a cap on how much they can make either. Australia allows individuals to homebrew their own beverages. The only restricted restriction is that they cannot use a still. It is an individual. It is bleh. if any individual does own a still. Its size cannot be larger than 5 liters and it cannot be used for distilling alcohol. 
The only use that may have is to distill certain substances like water or essential oils. New Zealand allows home brewing and, dist and distilling as of 1996. When the ban against this was lifted, individuals cannot distill spirits on their own personal use for their only for their own personal use, but they cannot sell it in any alcoholic beverages unless they have appropriate license to do so. South Africa allows individuals to manufacture fermented beverages in their home without any limits in the amount. Interesting though, it is that is that they cannot distill or sell beverages or give them to any of their staff. The reason behind the law regarding their staff is unclear unless it's a illegal issue involving intoxication. What you will find is that most states or countries is that the home of ho the home brewing of beer, wine, and fermented beverages is not what is against the laws. It's rather the sale of these products that is restricted. In many states, home brewing is not considered in, in their laws because they're more concerned about the manufacturer and sale of hard liquors. Because homebrew is not commercially manufactured and sold, it is often not included in the statutes regarding these regulations. It's a very gray area for sure. So four, the advantages and disadvantages of home brewing. So as with any hobby, there is advantages and disadvantages. The same is true with home brewing of beer. However, most people that choose to home brew their own beer and other beverages will tell you that advantages out far outweigh the disadvantages. When, peop when thinking of the number of advantages to home brewing, it comes to the mind. It comes to mind is that it seems it's about taste. Most beer lovers love to, to create for their own taste. Drinking commercially brewed beer as opposed to home beer is like eating food when you have a cold. The food just doesn't taste like it should. You're not getting the flavor. When you're drinking commercially brewed beer that has been canned, bottled, exposed to the outside air, knocked around, it's not going to taste anywhere as good or as fresh. If you don't believe this, open up a bottle of beer from the store, sniff it, and then sniff your freshly brewed beer. You'll see no comparison whatsoever. Sufficient to say, it's sufficient to say you may not want to ever go back to drinking store-bought beer once you've started brewing your own. This is probably the main advantage to brewing your own home brew. Healthy advantages. Brewing your own beer gives you the advantage of, healthy, of a healthy beverage. You may be surprised that beer being described as many as a healthy beverage, but it's healthy in the aspect that you know what's going into the beer and what's not. If you've ever looked at the ingredients of a bottle of beer or any beverage that, for that matter, you'll probably find that you don't recognize half the ingredients and you're going, that are going into the product. And worse than that, the fact that you are consuming these unfamiliar ingredients is very un unsettling. By brewing your own beer, you're getting all natural ingredients that are familiar to you. You're also not getting all the preservatives you get to drink com that you get to drink in commercial beers. So you're getting a better quality, better tasting beer by home brewing your own. You'll f be familiar with the malt, the barleys, the hops, and whatever other natural ingredients you put into your beer. In your quest for good home brew recipes, you'll find there are many varieties that you can try. Regardless of which recipe you finally decide to stick with, you'll still know what goes into the beer. You'll also like making your own beer that you can control the alcohol content and what goes into the beer. You may like a higher alcohol content while your wife enjoys a milder beer. So make a batch for each of you. When you buy a six pack of beer, you're forced to drink a certain alcohol content unless you want to buy another six pack of lower or higher alcohol content. When you make your own brew, you can mix it up and have a variety to suit everyone bragging rights. Let's not forget about the bragging rights. When you're done making your own beer, you'll probably want to have a party or a social gathering to show off your home brewing skills. It will get you a lot of pride to be able to say that you made it yourself. Your friends will be impressed and your culinary skills and you'll want to learn 
all you can about home brewing. That's where this channel, Crazy for Beer, will will help you. Home brewing beer, home brewed beer has a fresh, natural taste that will you'll never get commercially brewed beer. Not only is it natural and better tasting choice, but you'll also find it cheap compared to what you'll pay at the supermarket or liquor store. The ability to experiment with the recipe will will continue to be a source of for you of fun. You will never get tired of trying recipes, making different types of beers, whether it's mild, high alcohol content, dark light. You'll love experimenting until you find the perfect combination and your perfect recipe for your drink of choice. Another advantage to home brewing is that in addition to having a premium tasting beer, you also get an affor get it at an affordable cost. Once you have all the need for your beer making venture you'll be able to make beer for just a pennies on a dollar the cheapest type of commercial beer you can buy is at least a dollar a bottle you'll be amazed at how much beer you can brew at that same dollar as cheaply as you can make beer it is a shame that you can't sell it disadvantages for home brewing now we'll get into the disadvantages so home brewing your own beer or disadvantages as we discussed earlier, that that's not clear as to how many disadvantages there are versus advantages. Besides the mesh you'll have, the dis one disadvantage is making your own beer is the initial startup costs. If money and a budget is a major concern for you, you may want to, you may find it difficult to, or comfort or to be comfortably buying everything you need to make your own beer. You can typically expect to spend a few hundred dollars to get started. The equipment you'll need will cost $100 plus a large kettle, which may cost $50 or more. Keep in mind that your store prices for liquor, for liquid and dry yeast, and the entire list of ingredients to make a five-gallon batch can cost more, cost from $25 to $50. You'll want to buy some sanitizers and bottles, some sanitizers and bottles, which will cost from $10 to $20. For 24 bottles of 12 ounce size, the bottles hover can be reused repeatedly. Although you may continue to use your kitchen equipment to save money, many people choose to purchase special equipment designed to expe especially for beer making. Although these costs may sound expensive for starting off, many of them one-time costs, not to mention you'll get a lot of beer for the amount of money that it's invested. Another disadvantage of home brewing your own beer is that you'll love to taste so you'll love to taste so much that you may find yourself drinking more than you used to, more than you should. Your neighbors may be over more often, and you'll get some great tasting free at least to that. Give you'll get some great tasting free beer at least for them. Home brew can also be very messy and time consuming, especially until you found found and got the knack of it. You may decide that you uh, want a special room for this down in the basement in the garage. All right, varieties of home brewing. While hearing the terms home brew makes us often think of beer, we definitely are not limited to beer in general. Beer usually is the advantage of most, and another reason that it's fermented is that it's consumed so fastly. You've got to start fermenting it while you're drinking the last batch that you made. Home brewing beer is fun and it's an experience for everyone, but especially for individuals that enjoy good beer, as well as a variety of different flavors. You can easily switch from mild to light to dark, high alcohol, uh, high alcohol, high alcohol to low alcohol. This is what most home brewers enjoy about making their own beer. The ability to experiment and come up with your own concoctions. Wine brewing. If you're an individual that likes a good glass of wine, you'll love the opportunity of home brewing your own wine as well. For special occasions like social gatherings or formal affairs, many enjoy drinking hard liquor. Liquor is also a beverage that you'll find fun and interesting to make yourself. Many wine brewing starter kits are available if the brewing wine is what you want to try next. You won't be limited to your selection as you'll be able to make red wines, white wines, port ice wines, champagne, hard cider, and much, much more. 
Many other companies that sell wine making kits will help you in, the al in almost any kind of wine you choose to make. You tell them the flavor and the type that you want to make and they'll get you the right mark wine making ingredient kit. If you're planning to make wine in the future, you may want to start saving your old wine bottles and you can save a lot of money by not having to invest in these new bottles and recycling the current ones that you have in your home. Sometimes the price of the new empty bottles can cost almost as much as the home brew itself. Your initial investment will include ingredients and equipment which will run around $150. Most of the equipment that you'll use for home brewing beer can be used for wine and other spirits. This is especially true if you've invested for higher quality equipment. One thing that many home brewers enjoy about making their own is the flavor of the beverage they've actually made themselves. The taste is usually so good that they find themselves drinking it while they're making it. Another positive about making wine is the that it's easier as it's as easy as making beer most state state making wine is mo, most state that making wine is easier the event the average batch size you can get with the starter wine making kit is six gallons while that might not seem like a lot it can go a long way it takes most people quite a while to go through even one gallon of wine such much less than six unless you drink a lot most wine is consumed not as consumed as often as large quantities of beer a good rule of thumb when with making wine is that the longer it sits the better it's going to taste if you find it doesn't taste that great at all it's probably because it's not ready when you're ready to drink when it's ready to drink, you'll find that it's probably the best tasting wine you've ever had. The mixing, the sanitation, and the process for the wine only takes about a half hour. The bottling takes one to two hours, and then you wait six or more weeks to get great tasting wine. If the wine was made right out with proper sanitation techniques, it will stay fresh for over a year. The use of premium corks and high alcohol content will keep it fresh even longer. All right, so liqueurs and cordials. In the past years, the younger generation of drinkers was mostly drinking, mostly beer drinkers. While they still enjoyed a good beer today, they also loved the taste of liqueurs and cordials. If you think it's most, most or the, if you think it's mostly the older generation that enjoys these fancy be beers or drinks. Couldn't be more wrong. Everyone enjoys a good drink occasionally. This is the perfect way to increase the inventory in your home bar without spending an arm and a leg. The varieties of liquor that you can make are unbelievable. So imagine the fun you'll have making cream de mint, cream de coco, Irish cream, hazelnut, cherry brandy, amaretto, blackberry schnapps, peach schnapps, or Kahlua. Most homebrew kits for liqueurs and spirits will offer you a base recipe to start with and then the directions for flavorings that you want to use. One thing that homebrewed liqueur has in common is the taste. You'll find a comparison between the flavors of homebrewed liqueur compared to commercially brewed liqueur. Very similar. Homebrew soda pop. That's right, you can homebrew soda pop. While you're so busy making beer liqueur, your kids won't mind all the time it takes when they learn how to make their own soda. This is a relatively simple process, only takes an hour or so, and you can and you and they will love the flavor of the homemade ginger ale, sarsaparilla, cream soda, cherry soda, root beer, my favorite cola and more the tradition of making soda goes back as goes way back and is an educational is educational and is fun so making homebrew soda doesn't require a lot of in equipment you'll need a siphon hose a syringe spoon a bucket a kettle for boiling and some soda bottles you also need some caps and a bottle capper. 
by the way, your kids will love using the bottle capper and capping their own bottles. This is available in any store that sells homebrew supplies. The only real ingredients you'll need are the flavor packs, the yeast packs, the sugar, the water. Yeast packs are yeast packs made for beverages work better than yeast and will give your soda a better taste. You'll find that making soda is fun, gives a quick and quick and gives you and your family a great tasting beverage. Making your own soda consists of nothing more than mixing sugar, water, adding flavor, mixing the yeast, and siphoning it into the bottles. Once the bottles are full, you put the caps on them and let it sit for two weeks, which seems like forever. Alrighty, so the glossary of home brewing terms. So these these are terms that uh, come with home brewing. So if you're new to the process of homebrew, you're going to be reading many words and terms that are unfamiliar to you. So while you don't need to know what they mean, it may be helpful to have a general idea what most of them mean. Keep in mind that some of these terms may be used in larger breweries rather than in your homebrew. And while there are many other brewing terms, these most common ones you'll hear at your home in your home brewing. Additives. These are substances such as preservatives, enzymes, antioxidants may and may be added to your home brew to add shelf life and or the simplicity of the brewing process. Adjunction. This is a fermentable material used to make cheaper or lighter bodied beer and is substitute for traditional grains. Alcohol. This may refer to either alcohol or ethanol, which the yeast works with the sugar and the malt. You get a certain alcohol content which makes it intoxicating. Others describe it as a result of fermentation. Alcohol by weight. This means the amount of alcohol that is that's in your beer as a percentage of volume beer. If the bottle states it's 2.5% alcohol by weight, it means that 2.5 grams of alcohol for every 100 centimeters of beer. Pretty confusing, yes? Ale. This is the type of beer resulting from the use of malted barley and top fermented types of brewer, brewers and yeast. Most Yale, most ale you'll find will have hops in them which balances out the flavor. All malt. This is a beer that is made from all barley malt and no adjunctions. Alpha acids. These are the bittering compounds in hops which are extracted when the hops are boiled into the wort. The higher the alpha acid content, the more bitter the taste will be. So high hops, bitter taste. I've had many high uh, hop beers that are so bitter uh, I can hardly stand them. Barley. This is a cereal grain which, once malted, is used as mash when brewing beer. Barrel. This is the unit of measure used to store beer. In the U.S., a barrel is equal to 31.5 gallons and 36 imperial gallons in Britain. Beer. This term refers to the beverages that are flavored from hops and contain alcohol from fermenting grains such as malt. Body. Body describes the thickness and the prop property of your beer, either full or thin bodied. Bottle capper. This is those little bottle capper things that your kids will love making pop with. This is the device that you put in your crown, put, put your crown cap to crown your bottles with. They can be used at home brews for beer or for soda. Um, bottle, bottling bucket. The, this bucket made of food grade plastic has a spigot at the bottom for your convenience and primarily priming sugar is put in these buckets prior to boiling prior to bottling so that these sometimes refer to as priming vessels bottom fermenting yeast this is one of the two types of yeast that are used in brewing also known as lager 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 jaeger Lager. Jaeger, not good. Bad Jaeger stories, I could tell you. 
Lager yeast, it is best used when, when at low temperatures and proceeds a clean and crisp taste because the ferments are with more sugars. Kettle, brew kettle, this is a vessel where the wort, where the wort that comes from the mash is boiled in, in with hops. Carbonation, this is the sparkle created by the fermentation and caused by carbon di di dioxide. Carbon brush, this, if you use this carb, carbon boy, carboy brush, bleh. if you use carboy, this brush is a necessity for cleaning. It's perfect for getting into inside of the carboy, which you'll have to do to clean it thoroughly. Conditioning tank. This is the tank where the beer is stored after the initial fermentation. This is where it matures and becomes carbonated from the secondary fermentation. Dry hopping. This is when you add more hops to the aging fermentation to the beer, increase the aroma or the charter of the hop. Glass carboy. This glass, this glass container, these glass containers, which are also called fermentators, are used to store beer while it ferments. Most common size is five gallons, although it comes in a variety of sizes. Hops. This is the female cone at the top of the plant, which is used to is a stability and flavoring agent in beer and other beverages. Hydrometer. This is the instrument used to measure the weight of the liquor, fermented or unfermented, in relation to the volume of the water. Lager. Lager? Lager. This term is used to describe the style of beer. Malt. This is a grain, usually barley, which is soaked in water to get it to a certain moisture level. It is then germated and then roasted to be used in making beer. The amount of roasting determines how light or dark the beer will be. They are mostly used as junk adjunctions. Racking cone. This is a hard plastic tubing. When used, they're transferring beer from one fermented kettle to bottling bucket or kettle. It begins, it bends on one end of the cap and the other end, which lets liquid flow through the littlest amount of segment. Sanitizer. This is a special type of cleaner needed to sanitize, not just clean, all your equipment so it is sterile and will not promote bacteria. Bacteria is very bad when you're creating your own brews. Some people use unscented bleach for this. Siphon hose. This is the hose used to get the beer from the vessel or the barrel into the bottles where it is stored. Sparge bags. These bags are reused to steep the specialty grains or hops in brewing kettle. You can get a reasonable or disposable ones. They are steeped like tea bags. Tubing. You'll need both tubing 3 8 or 1 half inch inside diameter and large tubing is 1 inch inside diameter for your home brewing. A small tubing is used to get beer out of the fermented out of the fermenter for bottling. This is a large tubing that is used in initial initial fermentation process. Both size tubing are made of heavy duty plastic the vessel. This is the container where the beer will be kept during the fermentation period. Wort. This term is used to describe the mixture of the boiled water and the malt at the hops has added before it is fermented. Wort chiller. All right, this is used to quickly chill the boil boiling wort to help the yeast pitch much quicker, which helps prevent the risk of infection it is not necessarily, but it makes things much quicker, smoother. Some choose to make their own with a tubing blender and coping tubing. Yeast. This ingredient helps with the fermentation of your home brew. While some may try to use baker's yeast, ye brewer's yeast will work much better. All right, accessories you'll need for home brewing from scratch. So now that you've read, or now that we've presented to you much of the home about home brewing, you'll probably be excited and ready to get going. Although your beer will need a couple of weeks from the first day until it's ready to drink, 
the actual home brewing process only takes a couple of hours. Your main concern is probably what equipment you'll need at the home brewing process. A lot of this will depend on how serious you are about home brewing. There are a few different factors you may want to consider. The two main factors are your seriousness about home brewing and your budget, of course. If you don't have a lot of money, home brewing is not for you. If you are very serious about getting into home brewing and think you'll be doing it a lot, you'll probably want to purchase some good home brewing equipment. On the other hand, if you're trying this out for the first time and you aren't sure you'll be doing it again, you're not going to want to spend a ton of money on new home brewing equipment. Some of the household equipment you already have in your kitchen may be sufficient. You also need to keep your budget in mind. If finances are a concern, you'll want you'll want to use what you already have in your kitchen, get your equipment as cheaply as possible. Many of the equipment pieces listed make your home brewing much easier, but aren't a necessity. One last thing you should consider when deciding on what and what not to buy is the amount of room in your home. Do you have extra space, additional equipment, such as what you'll need for home brewing? Although many pieces are small, some of them are larger and take up a lot of space. So here's the equipment list. So a large pot, you'll need at least five gallons, some use up to 16 gallons. The larger the better, because it'd be less chance for spilling. This, usually, um, this is usually a large stainless steel pot, sometimes called your brew kettle. Tubing and clamps. Clamps, can get, clamps you can get at a store that sells home brewing equipment. Tubing is uh, for siphoning the beer. You'll want a food grade plastic tubing in both 3 8 and 1 inch diameter. The large tubing is to be used for the initial fermenting period and the smaller tubing is to use to get the beer from the fermenter to the bottling to the bottle. Airtight fermenter. You can purchase a glass carboy or use the five gallon size plastic bucket. I actually have a Lowe's one that I got a Lowe's. This is where you will keep your beer while it's fermenting. Glass carboys come in different sizes, although most common size although the most common size is a five gallons. It is if it's in your budget, you'll want to go with a glass carboy because you won't have to worry about it leaking and it's very easy to clean if you have a large brush. Carboy brush. If you have invested in the carboy, you'll want to have a carboy brush as nothing will clean it better. Airlock and stopper. There are different sizes of stop rubber stoppers and you'll need a 1 and 3 16 and a 1 and 8 16 to fit a 5 gallon carboy. The stoppers go into the opening of the carboy and locks into the stoppers. You can get a type 1 or type 2 airlock. They both work about the same. The type 1 is easier, much easier to clean. Bottle filler. This is used when you are bottling your beer and should be sized so it fits your rubber tubing. This is available where they'll see home where you'll see homebrew supplies. A thermometer. You'll need one that ranges from 32 to 220 degrees Fahrenheit or 0 to 100 degrees Celsius. A hydrometer. This is not a necessity but very handy. It comes in with a sampling tube that will measure the beer's gravity before and after fermentation. This will let you know how much sugar has been converted into alcohol. Bottles. You'll want to get returnable grade bottles because the heavy duty clean because heavy duty cleaning will be needed, which they are strong enough to withstand. If you're bringing five gallons of beer, you'll need about 60 bottles. If they're 12 ounce and 32 and 32 bottles, if they're 22 ounce, do not get the twist off cap bottles, but rather the ones where you pry off the lid. Bottle brush. While this is not a necessity, it will make washing your bottles a lot easier. Bottle washer. This attaches to your faucet, goes inside the bottle, and sprays water all over the inside, making cleaning much easier. Bottle caps. You'll need around 50 caps for five gallons of brew, which you can which can be purchased at a home brew supply store. Bottle capper. 
This is, hand, this is a handy device that can be held in both hands and there's also one that mounts to your table and requires only one hand. Sterilization solution. This is the necessity to keep your equipment sterile and prevent bacteria and the risk of infection. Some people use unscented household bleach and funnel. You'll need this when you pour your beer from the pot, the, the brew kettle, into the carboy. Sparge bag. These are used when steep specific specificities, grains, or hops in the brewery potting. These come re reusable and nylon or disposable. Excuse me, I get a drink of water here. All right, racking cane. This is the hard plastic tubing that is used to transfer the beer from the fermenter to the bottled bucket. It has a bend in the end and a special cap that allows the beer to go through the other end and it helps minimize the amount of sediment that flows through it. Bottled tubing. This is a hard plastic tubing that is sprung load that is spring loaded and that lets the beer flow through it when it's pressed at the bottom of the beer. Bottling bucket. This is made of food grade plastic and has a spigot at the bottom for your convenience. The priming sugars are put in these before bottling, which is why sometimes they're called priming vessels. Wart chiller. You won't have to have these, but they make the wart cool down a lot faster. So this comes from different sizes and styles. Many people like their own to, like to do do their own tubing and bender and copper tubing. Home brew kits. So now that you've read, we've went through the list of possible homebrew supplies, you may need to get started with. You're probably wondering where to begin. So unless money is not a con concern, you're not going to want to rush out and buy all the new supplies in this last segment that we did. The amount you choose to start with is a matter of personal choice, and you can purchase everything on our list, but you'll find homebrewing is not something you're going to stay with. You'll have invested a lot of money and there's other ways to get started with your equipment without spending too much money. One of the options is purchasing a home brewing kit. I've done this in the past and it's very, very convenient, easy, and low cost. <clears throat> so beer making kits. You'll find many different brands of beer making kits on the market. The prices can range as low as $20 up to $200 or more. If you're just starting out, the home brewing as a homebrewing hobby, homebrewing kit is going to be the least expensive way and most affordable option. You may not have all the supplies you'll have if you purchase them individually, but you'll have enough to get started. You can always expand your inventory of products later to do your homebrew. A real popular home beer making kit is the beer machine. Can be This can be yours for under $100 and everything you need to start making beer. At this home mini brewery is made in the sturdy design and construction is construction complete with custom pressure gauges and it tells you a carbon level, brew quality, dispensing pressure and you'll have a great taste, high quality beer in, in 7 to 10 days. That seems like forever when you're doing it though. The self-regulating brewing system holds the natural carbonization and includes auxiliary CO2 carbonization system, allowing you to have beer on tap, which is my favorite way to have it. Just how you like it in public when you go to the bars and the pubs and the restaurants. The carbonization system lets you control the pressure used by for dispensing your beer. You have the perfect head of beer. Fresh taste for up to six months if you let it last that long <laughs> including the beer machine included in the beer machine is the beer mix which is mixed with water to give you 2.6 gallons of great tasting beer you'll also get pub style handles which you can personalize the beer machine is compact in size so it won't take up much room in your refrigerator shelf this is probably one of the simplest beer making kits that you will find as a starter kit other more expensive beer making kits are available. Homebrewer Outpost makes it quite a few different homebrew kits for under $100. You can get a complete beer making starter kit that includes all the basic brewing equipment you'll need. With this, you can make five gallons of beer, five gallons of any type of beer you choose step by step. 
oh sorry step-by-step -step directions and recipes come with each kit with many supplies including fermenting bucket bottling bucket and a spigot a hydrometer thermometer bottle capper bottle caps sanitizer siphon unit and more the only thing that this cut kit doesn't come with is the bottles and the large kettle large kettle is kind of key here you'll have to grab one of those if you want to really expand your beer mark marking equipment inventory you can purchase beer making starter kits that have other accessories like a wart chiller deluxe bottling package secondary fermenter deluxe kegging package and extra beer making ingredients the keg packaging works great for those that don't know they don't want to fuss with and make a bot make a mess of bottling their own beer in individual bottles this way you'll always have beer on tap that's for those home tapper guys and girls and just the way you want to enjoy it the most so that's my preferred preference is to have it on tap there are just a couple of kits available and there are many more available in the market take your time and look around and don't be afraid to ask questions there's no dumb in questions beer making kits are great because they give you all the necessities that you'll need to get started along with the directions to make the best home brew you can possibly make it's like a person with no baking experience trying to decide to buy a complete cake mix or a cake from scratch or a recipe in their cookbook both are relatively easy but the cake mix is going to be much easier and will also be less mess beer making kits can be purchased relatively cheaply the only thing the only thing some people complained about was that the eventually that eventually they wanted to expand their inventory to larger later that made their kits unusable so if you do buy more merchandise down the road those little kits you buy are going to be irrelevant because you're going to have to purchase all the other equipment so if you're not going to make a lot of beer the kits are the way to go however if you want to make beer regularly and once you make one you're going to want to make it regularly you'll be better at it'll be better at investing in the individual supplies from reading reading the list through you know reading through the list that we've provided here you may find that you will already have a lot of them in your home and you won't have to buy anything thus saving you a lot of money using the internet for help so you can definitely use this channel or reach out to the internet <coughs> excuse me you'll be amazed at how many web pages beer making forums you'll find online you may consider purchasing used beer making equipment on ebay you can find some great buys and used equipment that people no longer want because they've stepped it up to the next level. You definitely want to check out some of these places before you make any large purchases. You may pay full price on new equipment when you can get something used fairly slightly at a fraction of the cost. Beer making forums are a great place to discuss your beer making with others and those that enjoy the same hobby you can exchange tips and learn new ideas while searching for some equipment you may need on these forums you'll also find some great new recipes and many members share them it, if you have a homebrew supply store in your area they will carry new equipment but they may also have some excellent used equipment at a very good price this is also a good place to get help or advice on anything you're not sure about whether you decide to purchase the equipment little by little, at a glance, all at once, going with the quit kit is the best time saver, money saver, and the best way to get started to see if this is something you want to pursue. Process of home brewing. Now that you've learned everything you need to know about home brewing beer, let's get started. Home brewing consists of five steps: brewing the beer, cooling and fermenting. Priming, the bot priming and bottling, aging and drinking, the fun part. These directions are for five gallons of homebrew beer as well as the basic home brewing. You may need to make some slight changes in the process depending on your equipment. You also, use, if you're also using a, quit, a, a kit, you may have to adjust this process depending on the type of beer you're making. And finally, let's get brewing. First thing you want to do is sterilize everything. Not just wash it, we have to sterilize it. Bacteria may not be seen, but it still can be there and ruin your entire batch of beer. Home brew, brew supply stores sell sanitizers, or you can 
Use ble bleach a bleach uh, mixture yourself. Make a mix of five gallons of cold water per two ounces of unscented bleach. Make sure it's unscented. In your sink or a large tub, bathtub, large bucket. Sanitize your carboy first. If you only have one, follow followed by the other equipment and things that fit your sink. Soak it all for 10 minutes and then rinse them out thoroughly. Preparing the wort. Put the approximately one and a half gallons of cold water into your large brewing kettle. If the recipe you're using uses specialty grains, put them in a sparse bag along with long and along with and soaked in the kettle and turn down the burner when it reaches a point where it's almost going to boil take the sparge bag out add the malt extract it into the kettle and bring it to a boil again let it boil for 20 more minutes making sure that it doesn't boil over make sure you stir the mixture immediately and consistently so the malt doesn't stick to the bottom and burn i've had that happen before stuck to the bottom, burned, doesn't taste very well. Put the required amount of bitter hops in and sparge back and steep for at least 30 minutes. Do not remove it before 30 minutes as it needs this much time for all the oils to extract from the hops. If your beer recipe asks for finishing hops, which are optional, which will make this much hoppier and stronger, Put them in another sparse bag and steep for one to ten minutes. If you're after aroma, only for two minutes max. But if it's flavor you're concerned with, then ten minutes will probably get you where you want to be. Turn off the heat, take off the wart, the hot burner, and put it put a cover on it on the brewing pot. Chill the wart. If you have a fermenter glass carboy, fill it half full with the color with the cold water. If you have a wart chiller. You can use this to chill the wart. If not, fill up the batch of ice cold, fill up the batch with ice cold water and with ice cold water to sit in the brewing pot so you can chill it. You will may need to drain the ice water and refill it with ice. If you don't have a wart chiller, you'll want you'll wish you did at this point. It's not a big investment. Get a wart chiller. Preparing proofing the yeast. While your wort is cooling down, you can be prepared. You can prepare the yeast, get it sterilized, measuring cup, and add six ounces of lukewarm water to it. The fermenter, the brewing pots with the wort cooled is where you're going to catch where you can almost touch it. We'll use a funnel to move the wort to glass carboy fermenter. You may use a small sterilized pot instead of the funnel. All right, attach tubing. So set the fermenter in place where you can stay, where can stay cool, and out of sunlight and in large container you can fill halfway with water. First, the first couple of days you you'll readily see the yeast go to work, and excess foam will come out of the top and air bubbling out of the center. More waiting. This is what we do. We hurry up and wait. After you put the airlock on, the beer will need to ferment until the yeast is done, usually taking 5 to 14 days. It will be ready for bottling when the airlock is no longer bubbling and the hydrometer reading will tell you if the fermentation is done. Alright, so bottling steps. Once again, you will sterilize everything. You get the bottling bucket, the hose, the tubes, the cane, the bottles. The bottles need to be thoroughly cleaned and sterilized. Transferring the beer. Now you're going to transfer the beer from one fermenter, from the fermenter to the bottling bucket. So bottling the beer, finally, putting the bottling bucket on the table, take the hose from the rack, cane, and continue with the bucket. Capping, now you'll need to be a steady surface for this. You may want to stay on the floor, or you may want a cheap bottle capper and put the bottles on. Bottle capper is the way to go. All you have to left to do is clean up your mess. And that's it. So follow these directions. You can make your own home brew. It's definitely worth giving a try. And it might take you several times to find the right brew that you're going to really enjoy. So again, this is Crazy for Beer, where we teach you how to make home brews. I hope you enjoyed this. Please share, like, and comment below, and we'll talk to you soon.